Juventus out. Remember, 1-1 was the score against Ajax in the first leg, and it started well for Juve. Cristiano Ronaldo opening the scoring, but goals for Ajax either side of half-time guarantees them a place in the semi-final. Juventus out, and people who didn't see the game, Craig, might think, well, you know, maybe Ajax got lucky. In no way do they not deserve this win. Not over two games. Not over the two games, which is incredible. Well, maybe it's not. I always felt in today's Champions League games, this was going to be the better game because of, you know, Bass's dominance, which we'll talk about. And I felt Ajax would go and have a go and play their football. But I did, like most people think, Juve's experience and with Ronaldo would just edge them out. Yeah. You know, too much now, too much experience at home. What they did in the last leg against uh, Atleti with the Ronaldo hat trick. But they were beaten by a better team. And you know what? They were out schooled in terms of a football lesson. Ajax is youngsters, mixed with experience, knocked the ball about faster, quicker, more accurately. And in that second half, it was particularly in the first, you know, 30 minutes of the second half, they ripped them apart every time they went forward. They could have had themselves three or four. They well, really could. Yeah. Really could. And, and for Juventus, they didn't have a shot on target after the 31st minute, which kind of sums up how lackluster they were. Yeah. They were terrible it, in the It was pretty half. ridiculous. I mean, and we thought that Juventus, given their experience, as Craig Riley points out, would, would have the beating of Ajax, no question. They get the goal that they want, that ultimately 1-0, what you think would, would see them through. And then it, it almost seems as though they revert into this, well, we'll defend that lead that, that we have, and, and they've done so successfully in the past. But this is an Ajax team that don't seem to follow that history and, and certainly haven't read any scripts of late because they just kind of recognize that Juventus sit back a little bit, soaking up pressure. And, and, you, and, and Ajax simply went to them, played the football that, that got them this far, in particular those two, two ties against Real Madrid. They were simply lethal in the counter-attack and in the way they got numbers forward and the way that they always seemed to, to find a pass and never seemed flustered. And, and Juventus just couldn't find that... That, that grasp of the game mm. after that. Once you take your, your foot off an opponent's neck, you, you're asking for trouble, and, and that's exactly what they got. Juventus never showed the intensity that they showed in the second leg against Atletico no. Madrid. It was never that type of game for Juventus, and it's almost as if they thought, well, look, the result that we got away from home will be more than enough for us to come home and dominate because we are Juventus, because we are at home. Credit to Ajax and credit to the middle of midfield between Lasse Shona and Van de Beek and Frankie de Jong. They dominated Pjanic and Emre Chang and Matt Tweedy. And I mean they dominated. They destroyed those guys. There was no real transition for Juventus. So whenever they were under pressure and they were trying to find an outlet, there was no outlet through the midfield. Those guys dominated the midfield. And then the attacking players for Ajax, not the attacking players for Juventus, but the attacking players for Ajax took over. And so Tadic is running with, with yep. the ball. Sayek is running with the ball. Neres is running with the ball. They are all creating opportunities for themselves, for others. In fact, I would go as far as to say overdoing it, mm -hmm. overpassing. When would you think, when would you have thought that we would be talking about Ajax overpassing in Juventus, in their attacking half? almost trying to make the perfect goal rather than taking advantage of the opportunities. Had they been more effective and more efficient in the final third, this is nowhere near 2-1. This is not this yeah. close. And it was not this close over two legs. Embarrassing for Juventus, tremendous work for Ajax. Let's bring Gab Marcotti into the conversation. Gab, who's getting the blame? Well, I, I, think, I think it has to be across the board. But I think, first of all, you have to... Uh, point to the fact that, you know, if for, for three of the four halves, you know, maybe you could, you could, you could argue that these teams were, were roughly even. Um, in the second half, uh, Ajax simply road graded them. And I think the guys made a good point. You know, if, if all you see is the goals that Juventus conceded over the two legs, you know, you can go and you can point to an individual mistake, uh, you know, in each one. Like, like tonight, obviously, uh, the, the, the defense not coming up and an underlegs header, you know, Rugani probably should have done better. But it's all those other chances that Ajax either missed or Chesney made a save or, or the one where, 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 where Pjanic just has to make that incredible recovery or, or Tadic deciding not to shoot when he probably should have buried it, um, you know, and, and, and overpassing. 
it really was a, a tremendous beatdown. And Max Allegri said, you know, I can point to the mistakes, but when an opponent plays so well, you know, we'll go back and we'll see what we could have done better, what we should have done better. I agree. The, the, the midfield struggled. Um, they, they, you know, they talked about lack of leadership. They talked about, um, you know, the usual things that managers trot out. I personally think it's, it's an issue with Juve, which is that I, I think we overrate experience. Um, and, you know, experience is great, but knowing how to play the game, understanding the game tactically, having quality, having intensity, having work rate, and putting all those things together on the night, that, that will trump experience. But let, we shouldn't forget Ajax started this competition in July. I believe, mm -hmm. I might be wrong, but I think it was th yeah. three qualifiers. Uh, this is a huge yeah. shot in the arm for Dutch football. And the resurgence, not only as a le league, but more importantly, as a national team. Plus, they're in a title race. They put out a full-strength side they at the to. weekend because they had to. Juventus, meanwhile, rested a lot of key players. Yet you watch that game, and it was Juve who looked tired. And De Jong was a big doubt because of injury. Yeah. And only, what, three days rest. Uh, so that was a huge risk. The, the, only, the only difference is goal difference in, in the Dutch league. So they're fighting on two fronts. Uh, the national team's getting better again. Yeah. People are talking about the Dutch league again. People, and and, it, and it's a, it's a, it goes against those people that say, well, unless you can spend a gazillion dollars, you can't compete. Because if you make the right signings, if you get experience back in, like Blind, if you get Tadic from South, Southampton, I mean, let's be honest, who else was out there trying to drag Tadic from Southampton? And by the way, in both the Bernabeu and here again, he yeah. was amazing. Uh, and then you mix the youngsters they've got coming through, and I know they're going to lose De Jong, and they will, they will lose De Let, there's no doubt about it. I don't want to be negative, but that's just the way it's going to be. So when you can mix and match, and you've got good coaching and a good conveyor belt coming through, you might not win it, but you can at least compete and put performances on like that. Juventus, of course, out, Gab. <coughs> what does this mean for Allegri? Well, Max Allegri is going to be back next year um, in, a, in a rare interview. Uh, the president, Andrea Agnelli, came out afterwards and sort of said, you know, reminded everybody about what a great cycle it's been for Juve and how the cycle continues. But, you know, Juve really are like uh, a team that kind of, you know, put all their chips on red. They, they went all in when they signed Cristiano. They thought Cristiano was going to be uh, the missing link. I don't think anybody's going to point to him and, and blame him. He certainly did his part. Um, but maybe in so doing, they kind of lost f sight of the fact that, you know, it's great adding all these experienced players, but um, maybe you need to get the balance right. And, you know, they, they added uh, uh, Blaise Matuidi, the, the Aaron Ramsey is going to come in next year. Just a lot of guys who are sort of in, in their late 20s. I think to some degree, other players like, like Dybala or Bernardeschi, uh, Dybala especially, I don't think they benefited at all from uh, Cristiano's arrival because, you know, it, it took responsibility away from him. Oh, look, no worries. That guy's here. Cristiano sort it. And, and I think that showed during the season. This has been coming. Juventus, we, we say, see, they say this almost every week. You know, you can probably count on one hand the number of games against good opponents where they played really well this season. Atletico Madrid was one, uh, maybe one or two others. But that's it. For more, sign up now for ESPN+. Plus.